let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, Amen.
our God. There is one body and one spirit. There is one holy God all else. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. The reading, Ecclesiasticus. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers in their generations. The Lord appropriation them to them great glory, his majesty from the beginning. There were those who ruled in their kingdoms and were men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and proclaiming prophecies, leaders of the people in their deliberations and in understanding of the people's learning, wise in their words of instruction. Those who composed musical tunes and set forth verses in writing, rich men furnished their generations and were 
and were the glory of their times. There are some of them who have left a name so that their praises are declared. And there are some who have no memorial, who have perished as though they had not lived. They have become as though they had not been born, and so have their children after them. But these were, nevertheless, men of mercy, whose righteous deeds have not been forgotten. With their descendants, it will remain a goodly inheritance to their posterity. Their descendants stand by the covenants, their children also, for their sake. Their posterity will continue forever, and their glory will not be blotted out. Their bodies were buried in peace, and their names lives to all generations. Peoples will declare their wisdom, and the congregation proclaims their praise. Here ends the reading. reading from the Revelation to St. John. After this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing round the throne and around the, the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessed and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these? clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? And I said to him, 
sit, you know, and he said to me, these, sir, you know, he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb is in the midst of the throne, will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you.
Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son. Give us grace to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Just a, few, uh, just a few weeks ago, or maybe a, a month or two ago at this point, the whole world was taken captive. Something happened that had never happened before. It ended up on all the news stations, and it captured the attention of both young and old. Taylor Swift showed up at a football game <laughs> to see her boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, play football. And suddenly, uh, fathers and husbands everywhere were saying, get back to the game, get back to the game. I want to see the game. I don't care about Taylor Swift, get back to the game. And suddenly, uh, mothers and daughters and all over the world started watching Chiefs games and joining in with the fun in the living room. We're strange creatures, aren't we, as human beings? We have a tendency to find people who we identify as excellent humans. And once we've done that, we tend to put them on pedestals. Who of us has not met a hero of ours and gotten butterflies in our stomach and maybe a red face for a little while? But the funny thing is those who we make our heroes, and I think oftentimes those who deserve to be our heroes, are those to whom we pay the least attention. My friends, that is why we have a day like today in the liturgy of the church, a day when we celebrate and honor all of the saints. And today I want to take this time to explore for each of us our relationship as Christians to all of the saints. Our relationship is such that we are called, first of all, to honor them, second of all, to worship with them, and finally, to emulate them. But first of all, what do we mean by honor them? Our text for this morning from Ecclesiasticus says this, Let us now praise famous men and our fathers in their generations. A funny thing happens when uh, we want to do this for the saints. Oftentimes, there tends to be an uproar. We want to make too big of a deal about the saints. But nonetheless, we... Uh, quite often make a deal, great big deal about a great many people and oftentimes have no problem with it at all. And as a matter of fact, I would submit to you that we shouldn't. There are many, many people that are deserving of our honor and to whom we ought to show it. Not only should we show them honor, but we owe them honor. I can think first and foremost of a great and wonderful uh, holiday that's coming up for us as Americans in the very near future. That would, of course, be Veterans Day. On that day, we rightly honor those who have fought and bled and died for our country. And we should honor them. But my friends, if we show such honor for those who conquered worldly kingdoms, kingdoms that will pass away, how much more should we honor those who have fought and bled and suffered and died to establish an eternal kingdom and a kingdom that will eventually spread to the very ends of the, work, of the earth? A kingdom that will eventually take over the entire cosmos. A kingdom that shall never pass away, but shall ever reign eternal. These men and women who fought and died for our faith, fought not with swords, fought not with spears or with guns, but fought with virtue, fought with patience, fought with persecution. These have renounced the world in all of its vain pomp and glory. These have conquered the devil and all of his works. These have mastered the flesh and all of its covetous desires. Hardly a single one of us in this room can say that we've done the same. But yet, if I mention to you the names of George Washington or Amelia Earhart or Neil Armstrong, you would have no problem relaying to me who they are and what they've done. But yet, if I mention to you the names of Ignatius or Agatha or Lucy or Cecilia and asked you who they were or what they had done, I would dare say that not more than a handful of you could tell me the brave fought that they fought for the sake of the gospel. 
You could not tell me of how flesh was torn by lion's teeth, of how skin was pierced by arrows, or of how the body was consumed by the flame, all for the spread of the gospel that we love so dear. Yes, my friends, we owe them honor. Worship, yes, is for God alone, but honor is due unto his saints. And if anything, it should remind us of this, that even in the midst of their sufferings, life was not ended. And this leads us to our second point. First of all, not only that we should honor them, but we should also and do, and as a matter of fact, cannot help but to worship with them. Yes, we worship only God alone, but death could not even tear the saints from life itself. As a matter of fact, if death did anything for the saints, it made them more alive. And it helps us to affirm this one truth, that all of us have together been baptized into the body of Christ, and all of us together are one body with him. By means of the incarnation, we all continue to be one body. Not just the church militant here on earth, but the church victorious in heaven as well. Our second lection for today was from the book of Revelation. And I want you to just close your eyes for a minute and listen to this beautiful prose. And imagine in your mind what this must have looked like to the Apostle John. He says, and after this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number. From every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and the Lamb clothed in white robes and with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. What a glorious sight. I get tingles just imagining what that must be like. But here's the thing, my friends. Many of us have convinced ourselves that the book of Revelation is just about the end of the world, and so we think of this as something that hasn't happened yet. When in fact, the book of Revelation is really, if anything, to have the curtains torn back and to have us get, in this moment, a glimpse of the heavenly liturgy, of the eternal liturgy, not the liturgy that begins at the end of time, but the liturgy that is constantly taking place, ever and always. Everywhere you see a prophet in the Bible, every time they end up in heaven before the throne of God, you see the exact same thing. Angels and archangels and all the company of heaven bowing and saying, holy, holy, holy. This is not something that happens at the end of the time. This is something that is ever-present, that is ever-eternal, that we are ever able to participate in. And my friends, that is precisely what you are doing here today. You may be there dozing off to this homily, but what is happening beyond what you realize is that all around us we are surrounded with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, and we are about to tear away the veil. My friends, whenever you get bored or don't want to come to church, realize what church actually is. Realize what is actually taking place. One of the unique things about the historic architecture of the church, traditionally, throughout most of the history of the church, uh, the church has faced east, has stood on this side of the altar, and the priests worship with the people all facing in the same direction towards the rising sun. Now, we don't do that much more anymore, but uh, the point of it then was that behind the altar was the reredos. We still have one right here. And the point of the reredos was to have the same architecture as the rest of the church, with images of the saints on there and of angels and so on and so forth. The idea was, is that the Eucharist was not taking place at this end of the church. The idea was is that the altar was in the center of the church, with the church militant on this side and the church victorious on that side and with altar here in the center, connecting the two. And my friends, on days like this, on days where we celebrate all the saints, 
it is important for us to remember that continues today to be the case. When we celebrate the Blessed Sacrament, which is the body of Christ, we are bringing together those two sides of the church, reuniting those who have been divided, the church militant and the church victorious, come together in the victory of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, my friends, with the saints, our relationship to them, first of all, we are to honor them. Second of all, we are to worship with them. And finally, last of all, my friends, we are to emulate them. One of the objections that I often hear to uh, celebrating the saints is the warning that they may become idols. And yes, indeed, that can happen. But oftentimes, I find that I myself am not so much afraid of this. The first reason that I'm not afraid of this is because the lives of the saints themselves point to Jesus Christ. Our text from Ecclesiasticus this morning reminded us that the Lord apportioned them great glory, his own majesty from the beginning. The majesty that they exhibit, the virtues that they live out, the deaths that they die are not their own, but are Christ's. They simply exhibit the glory that they himself have imbibed by his goodness and by his grace. And why should we not celebrate that? We can see this if you look at, for instance, an icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary. If you ever look at an icon of the Blessed Virgin, if it's written properly, take a look at her hands. Her hands will always be pointing to wherever Jesus is. Her role is to take the glory off of herself and to point instead to Jesus Christ. And that is the role and function of all of our lives, to take the glory off of ourselves and put the glory upon him. And that is precisely what the saints do and the way in which they have lived their lives. No, my friends, my concern is not so much that the saints will become idols. Rather, my concern is the exact opposite. My concern is of the idols that we have already made, the heroes of our own age, those rock stars and those football players and those politicians to whom we think we can go for salvation. It is not the case, my friends. We've set the bar far too low. Let us not become like them. Because if we idolize them, we will want to be like them. I remember I wanted to be a rock star when I was in high school. I was even in a Christian rock and roll band. It was my dream to have an album, you know, take off and suddenly be thrown into fame and fortune. But look at me, I'm chasing all the wrong things, aren't I? Even in that case, even if I could construe it into some sort of a ministry, I would still just be chasing fame and fortune, which are things of this world. And the more we make heroes of this age, the more we will become more like this age in which we live. No, my friends, we need to have better heroes. St. Paul tells us in Philippians 3:17, he says, Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. St. Paul tells us, make the saints your heroes. Emulate them, because it is not their majesty that his, and that is our goal as well. Let our renown not be of the type of this world, not as winners of wars, but as makers of peace, not as those who hunger for wealth and glory, but as those who hunger for righteousness, not as those who live in comfort, but as those who rejoice at being reviled and persecuted for righteousness' sake. Jesus Christ, in our gospel passage today, says, Blessed are the meek. Do you know what the word meek actually means? There was a process in the 18th century of meeking war horses. The idea of meeking a horse is not to strip it of its power, but rather to harness its natural independence and to bring it as subservient under its master so that it could be used in war, not run away from the sound of cannons and guns and the chaos of war, but be subservient to the master that sat on its back and to run into battle and into danger. My friends, that is what the saints did. They mastered the flesh and they set it under the kingship of Jesus Christ and they charged full on into the battle against this world. They charged full on even unto persecution, martyrdom, and death. And my friends, that is what we are called to as well. 
we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who are cheering us on. And so let us be meek. Let us come under the lordship of our master. Let us stride victorious into battle, even if it requires our very lives, so that our lives as well can shine with the majesty and glory of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, you've knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son. Give us grace, O, to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. So glad to have all of you with us today. What a wonderful uh, and celebratory day we're having today. Congratulations, of course, to the Patels, the Candidos, uh, for, for the baptism of your children. Uh, it's also wonderful and exciting. Um, I, I uh, wanted to let all of you know that there will be, uh, uh, because of the baptisms, we're having cupcakes in the parish hall afterwards. So not, not just uh, uh, you know, your regular old coffee hour. Uh, we'll have, uh, we'll have pan- uh, 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 what are they called? Cupcakes. Have cupcakes as well. So come on back and, uh, and join us uh, a- after that. Uh, as you can see, uh, today not only is All Saints Day, but we uh, are also doing our, uh, our, our promotional video. Thank you, Vincent, for being here. Uh, if you do not want to be in the video, please let us know. We can probably make sure that, you know, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't happen. Just want to make sure that that's an option for you if you are, are very video adverse. Uh, just uh, let us know after the service and we can make sure that you're not in any of the shots. Um, coming up uh, also later today is our All Souls Requiem. Our wonderful choir will be singing uh, Foray's Requiem this evening, which will be followed uh, by the opening reception for our, uh, our next art exhibit uh, with uh, portraiture from uh, Ken Buck and Michael Chisano. Uh, I've seen some of it up there already. It all looks really wonderful. I can't wait for the Requiem tonight. It's going to be amazing. Make sure you invite all of your friends and family. Uh, I think it'll be an, an, excellent, uh, an excellent time together. Uh, also coming up this week is uh, the Chili Cook-Off. That'll be this Tuesday evening from 5.30. All of you are, of course, invited to come. Uh, and not only eat chili, but bring your own chili. Bring, uh, bring your best shot. Actually, I dare you. I dare you to bring your ch- chili and come and challenge me. I'm bringing some real, authentic Texas chili, folks. Uh, so uh, so if, if you want to uh, compete with that, uh, make sure you scan this, scan this QR code uh, and, uh, and join us this Friday evening at 5.30 uh, in the parish hall. Compete with me. <laughs> so anyways, um, and, uh, and, and, and lastly, I feel like there was, oh yes, uh, I believe that today is the last day for the Haskells before they move, and if they're here today, we wanted to send them off with a blessing. Haskells, are you here? Okay, we'll have to pursue them, uh, pursue them after the service, make sure they get their, their blessing and their gift. Uh, so with that, I think that's all I have to announce. Offer to God's sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right our duty and our joy. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses, that we, rejoicing in their fellowship, may run with patience the race that is set before us, and together with them may receive the unfading crown of glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Oh. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he All praise and glory is yours, O God, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. So now, O merciful Father, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
We, your humble servants, celebrate and make here before your divine majesty with these holy gifts, the memorial your son commanded us to make. Remembering his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. And we earnestly desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, asking you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ. And through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. We humbly pray that all who partake of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy because of our many sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we ask you to accept this duty and service we owe, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always perfect. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his blood, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us through this sacrament of your favor and goodness towards us that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of your everlasting kingdom. And we humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all the good works that you have prepared for us to walk. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Christ, peace.